coming to a text nation. You know, Wesley and I started this project not only to bring you the tech news that you can use, but also to shine a light on our hometown, Nashville, Tennessee. You know, a lot of people think Nashville is just country music, but it's not. We've got a lot going on in tech, in business, education, and it's with this broadcast we hope that we're able to shine a light on it and also share with you that Nashville's got a lot more going on. And one of the pioneers that's bringing Nashville into the map is Mr. Patrick White. And at the age of 12, he had his first design company. And through hard work, determination, and a lot of ambition, he is now the CEO of a successful design industry called Blend. Also the creator of a new uh, secret society kind of called Eyes Only. Here it is. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a succinct way to describe that, but uh, I, I am Patrick Wyden. Um, and essentially, I, um, I really just want to look at how to change the world in little ways using technology, using human behavioral insights, mm -hmm. and figuring out how we can make simple changes in everyday sort of experiences that make them better. Okay. So that's me. I mean, that's, that's what I'm all about. All right. Um, when I was going through your bio and your website, which sure. we'll have it down below, you take it out, patrickwyden.com. It said you started your first design firm at 12. I what, did. What made you at 12 years old think, you know, I can do this better? Yeah, you know, so uh, when I was 12, I'm not sure that that would be the way that I would have approached it necessarily, saying, hey, I think I can do this better. Um, it was more sort of that I was living on an island in Sweden with my parents at the time mm -hmm. and didn't have a whole lot to do. There wasn't really TV, and the TV that was there was in Swedish. Was Swedish TV. I didn't quite speak <laughs> Swedish. Um, nothing really to do on the island, no other kids to hang out with. So I eventually convinced my parents to get myself a laptop. And I taught myself all these kind of like weird skills, similar to what I do now. I just get fascinated with like, hey, what can I do with this kind of thing? And I just mm -hmm. go play with it, and play with it, and play with it. And I essentially live in the dark for like a month until I figure this thing out. So I did that. I taught myself how to design just about anything, from websites to logos to products, cars, anything. And I started to post this stuff online. You know, okay. When I, we would come home for periods of time, and I had the internet then, so I could come home and post like all this stuff I worked on the past six months. And I started to get job offers. Uh, okay. Which was really weird. At twelve. At twelve, because no one knew that I was a twelve-year-old. I mean, they just thought I was just a dude posted, you know, design offers and all these kinds of things. So, yeah, I start. I started a design firm when I was twelve. I, uh, my first contract was for a company in Australia called Mystery. That again, I had no idea I was twelve, but. It's really funny because as a 12 year old, like I said, you don't really approach it as a business. Yeah. It's it's more like a hobby that someone wants you to sort of you know do professionally for them. Okay. So as a 12 year old, my business skills were a little shitty, uh, I'd like to say. <laughs> uh, I never billed the guy, never you know said any agreements, never had any contracts, anything like that. Um, in a year, I think I made like $250 um, US. Okay. Uh, working all the time, like, but that was awesome. But like, to a 12 year old, 250 bucks. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's when I started to assume that he had to realize something was going on here with you know this system. Mm -hmm. It was cool because I mean, essentially, I just bought a bunch of Legos and uh, it, was, <laughs> it was great. I actually, still have a bunch of them. I think a lot of it that's where we got most of our dreams and creations sure. from. Legos. Legos. I, Why not? I still build Legos. I built a whole condominium, and I think maybe that's why now I own real estate. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nice. All right. So after twelve, you also um, designed a uh, like a social network. To yeah. Com to compete with MySpace, or was it to? So that 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 was something I did. Uh, I started when I was a freshman in high school, and the idea again at this point, I didn't really have a lot of business sort of sophistication or any kind of like understanding of really what you need to do to make money doing this. Mm -hmm. It was really just something that I wanted to go do, and I ended up just trying to see what happens. Okay. So I have very much an experimental philosophy. You say, hey. If I do this, what's going to happen? It's sort of similar to Seth Godin's poke the box philosophy. Yeah. Kind of sort of so, my goal at the time was to get free concert tickets because I didn't have any money in high school and I wanted to go to all these shows and I couldn't afford to go to all of them. So, I was like, okay, well, how on earth can I kind of tweak the system to figure out how to get myself in these shows for free? And lo and behold, when I started a music magazine, given the sort of fact that I've been designing stuff for like five or six years at this point, I could make something that looked legitimate enough that when I sent a request to a record label, they were like, oh, okay, this is like an upcoming music magazine, sure. And so, in the course of like two or three years, I emailed every artist that I ever wanted to meet, never got no. The worst thing that ever happened was they just wouldn't respond. Even that was pretty rare. So, oh yeah, I got to hang out with like Travi McCoy when he was living in a van, and uh, Sister Hazel and Ryan K and Alex PX. Yeah. I got uh, VIP back, uh, backstage access to Warped Tour. 
like a 15 year old. It was awesome because I'm like, you know, just chilling backstage and they're like, I have to let this kid in there. And I'm like, oh, you know, I got a pass. I got the Air Force One. It's like, it's like the Rolling Stone, the Pass Required, and like all these big magazines. And like, so it's almost like an almost famous. Sort of, yeah. I mean, you could definitely look at it that way. It was, it was really kind of weird experience to be a part of. But all my friends loved it too because I mean, they always got to come and get free tickets and those kinds of things. But yeah, it actually did start to grow with MySpace. It was, there was never like goal. Cool. So it's probably why it, you know you don't really know. No one knows about this thing because it wasn't like I was trying to say, okay, how can I beat MySpace? It was really more about how can I get free tickets and get my friends into shows for free and be cool artists and have a good time. So essentially the idea for Eyes Only came from something that's very much the opposite of what this thing is. So um, there's really an interesting phenomenon going on right now, and that's this sort of concept of the daily deal site, really spearheaded by a company called Groupon. So yeah. you know, everyone knows what Groupon is, but what Groupon does is they say, okay, hey, we're going to give you a 40, 50, 60% discount to try some product, service, or experience. And what they're doing there is they're going after a group that I like to call the deal seeker. So that's the person who's here essentially because this thing is on sale and or it's cheaper than it otherwise would have been. So yeah. it's, a, you know, it's a good deal. Now, Eyes Only was born out of the philosophy of what happens if we go in the complete opposite direction of that. So, the idea is how do we attract an experience seeker? And that's the person who's here because they really love this kind of thing, whether it be sushi or cocktails or driving courses or adventures in Nepal or whatever. Um, they're here because they really love that kind of thing mm -hmm. and or they just want to have an experience they remember for the rest of their lives. So, the whole idea behind Eyes Only is how do we take brands that are already among the best in the world at whatever it is they do, whether it be cocktails or travel or anything like that, nightlife, um, and elevate them up even higher than where they already are. So if you're a cocktail bar, we say, okay, you guys have amazing talent in the house. You have some of the most creative, you know, interesting mixologists on the planet. You've got all these crazy ingredients. What if you were to take those two things, combine them in a new way, create a secret menu for our members, and then we'll actually help you mark your prices up, not down. Yeah. And so that's, that's sort of the idea for Eyes and Only. And the whole thing rests on this really cool technology platform um, that works kind of like magic. So. Again, one of the core philosophies of Eyes Only is that we didn't want to have another app or another website or another user account or another password or another anything. So essentially the way it works is you have a one-time 30-second sign-up process with one of our agents. Um, you can meet these people they are out in every major city in the world, just interacting with people at bars, clubs, nightlife, uh, coffee shops, conferences, main events. You can meet these people and they'll essentially sign you up. And once you do that, we've attached to your Facebook account. So now we can kind of watch things in real time and then trigger events to happen. So okay. next time you check in at a high-end sushi place in New York or a cool club in LA or maybe a coffee shop in London, what might happen is you might get an SMS that says, hey, welcome back, Mr. Rogers. We're excited to have you with us this evening. Our head chef's in and would like to create a special dinner just for you. If you'd like us to send him to your table, reply with yes. And all those kinds of things can happen like that. We can text everyone on the floor of a, of a hotel and say, hey, Mr. Rogers is in the building. Here's his photo. Please greet him when you see him. Um, so everyone already knows your name. They know who you are. They know a little bit about you. They know your preferences. Your hotel room has already been stocked with your five favorite beers, all those kinds of things. Okay. So unlike Groupon, where a company really loses money, sure, this will help a company gain money and also I kind of gain some self self esteem because everybody wants to walk into a building and, sure. like you say, like, well, hello, Mr. Wyden, glad you're back. I've got yeah. your favorite table here. I've got your favorite drink already exactly. stirred. Yeah, and so I mean, one of the one of the really interesting pieces of Eyes Only is that we're trying to democratize that idea mm -hmm. because right now that's really reserved for the absolute, you know, most elite. They really are here all the time. And what happens is that there's sort of a, there's a gap there that's being missed, and that's the people who come here a lot, mm -hmm. but they don't spend you know a million dollars, so they're off the radar. Yeah, um, they kind of get missed and they get lost in the shuffle. And so there's really no way to reward them today. There's no way to even recognize them or interact with them. And so we're all about creating this two-way communication channel where all those kinds of things suddenly become possible. Nice. So like eyes only, and also your uh, design firm Blend. Sure. A lot of your focus is to make people smile, to make people fall in love, yeah. the products make you happy. So sure. are you a sad guy? And oh, no. hopefully that this <laughs> will cheer you up or tell, tell us about that. What what makes you want to focus in on sure. my happiness with a product or with a brand to develop that sort of relationship other than where other companies will just kind of slam it in your face mm -hmm. every time you, you know, sure. open a web page, look at a billboard, you know? What makes you want us to develop a relationship with a brand. 
Well, so, you know, historically, the whole idea of throwing things in your face used to work. It used to be a really great model, and in fact, it was the model that everyone used, and many companies still use. It. Yes. And the reason it works is because we didn't have that many things to choose from. There weren't 3,000 toothpaste, there were two. And you either got the red one or the blue one. Mm -hmm. And then one day, there was a third one. Still, kind of worked. We can push it at you, and you can make a decision. But today, the reality of the situation is that we have so much attention scarcity that for me to even sit here and pay attention to anything for more than like 10 seconds is a big deal in today's economy. Oh, yeah. And so, I mean, if you really want to get, you know, relationships with consumers, because it's all about relationships. It's not about, you know, a one-off sort of thing. One app, one thing, one time. Yeah. It's the whole experience on a global scale. Or so, even my attention span. Absolutely, right? So, I mean, if you think about it, the best way to do that isn't to say, hey, how do I get your attention? It's how do I make you fall in love with something? Because if you go after that, and you can actually successfully do that, you've solved all your problems. I mean, there are no other problems to solve. You don't need to worry about attention, because if someone's in love with anything, they're gonna pay attention to it. Yeah. They're gonna be you know, happy consumers for it. They're not gonna complain about it. They're gonna like it. Um, and I mean, that's a lot of what's made companies like Apple successful, is that consumers really do fall in love with their products and with their experience and with everything about it. Mm -hmm. And when the relationship goes sour, they do a really good job of managing that trying to help you fall back in love with their products. So, okay. I mean, a lot a lot of what I do is about that same kind of philosophy. All right. So we want you to fall in love with Patrick White and uh, like to thank him for inviting us and invade his home, <laughs> as it were. And maybe I'll put some behind the scenes of the getting ready process. It took a <laughs> while to even find this angle to shoot, and we're beside a railroad track, so that's what the train noise was before. We're not like a war scene or anything like that. <laughs> but check them out, patrickwyden.com, blenditbetter.com, uh -huh. eyesonly.com. It's actually, it's eyesonly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got the funky domain going. Gotcha. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. Definitely. Promote it, tweet about it. Well, I don't really tweet. I tweet on occasion. I don't have a Twitter account. I have a Twitter, but really just to say that I have a Twitter. I used to tweet all the time. Hey, we'd like to thank our guest Patrick Light today for letting us invade his home again. And hopefully that you can see that Nashville has a lot to offer. We got people like Patrick here, and we got a whole lot more people lined up that's gonna show you that we're not just some banjo playing uh, country music people, but we got a lot going on here. Nothing against country music. But uh, keep with us for episode 23. Rusty will be back. And be sure to follow us at youtube.com slash TV.